I have spent hours and tested over 30,000 different settings on glass so you don't have to. But things don't always go to plan. The large pane of glass that I was doing a lot of the testing on has unfortunately shattered into about a million pieces. And even though that happened, I also tested on other types of glass, which I'm going to talk about throughout this video. Now, one of the biggest selling points of a UV laser is its ability to engrave on glass. And yes, a CO2 laser can also do that, but the quality difference is worlds apart. A CO2 laser almost micro fractures the glass, whereas this, it is like a professional quality sandblast finish. And ultimately you get much cleaner results from this type of laser. Now, when I did my original review of this machine, I had some okay results on glass, but I also had a lot of failures. So I wanted to deep dive into this and really understand the best settings. And those six things are speed, cue pulse, frequency, line interval, passes, and focus. Now we're going to take a look at each one of those and I'll tell you what I found was the best settings for each range. And at the end, I'm also going to give you some additional tips. And if I had to go in completely cold, the settings that I would start with. Now let's start with one of the simplest settings, the speed. Now even though these machines can do up to 15,000 millimeters per second, I actually found the lower end of the range gave better quality on glass. And we were typically talking speeds of between 100 millimeters per second up to 400 millimeters per second. Now the tempered glass I was originally testing on, that did seem to cope better with the higher speeds. However, some of the other glass I had to bring it down a little bit. So if you were looking for a medium spot to start with, probably somewhere around two to 300 millimeters per second for block engravings. Now I just mentioned about block engravings, which is where the shape is being filled with lots of lines very close together. Now this is quite important because when I switched over to doing outline things, I had to slow the speed down a little bit more. We were talking probably between 60 and 80 millimeters per second. Otherwise the engravings wasn't quite completing. So let's move on to cupels and frequency. Now, some people don't fully understand what these settings really do. There is an article on my website that breaks it down into very simple detail and the differences of adjusting both. But in its simplest terms, frequency is the amount of cycles the laser is doing at any one point, and the cupels is the amount of bursts of energy it's throwing out again at any one point. Now, typically speaking, the lower the number for both, the more aggressive they're going to be. The higher number, the gentler they're going to be. Now the cupel setting, this was fairly easy to figure out. It was quite a low working range in terms of the glass. We were typically talking between one and five, but if I had to nail it down, I would definitely probably always stick with either one or two. That seemed to give me the most consistent result on any of the tests that I was doing. And with frequency, it was a slightly wider range. We were talking between about 25 up to about 40, depending on the glass and the settings we were running. Now, what I would say there is realistically, aim somewhere in the middle between about 30 and 35, and you're probably going to have better results from that. Now, just to link cupels and speed, if you have a low setting like 10 or 20 millimeters per second against a low cupels like one or two, when you are doing things like outlining, you may start to see tiny dots along the outline. So it's just something to bear in mind that really you want to probably keep the lowest speed above around 30 or 40 millimeters per second to avoid those micro dots. So let's take a look at line interval or how many lines per millimeter. Now I mentioned this earlier when doing block shapes and as I say it's about how many lines it's fitting into that particular area. Now the highest number you really want to be aiming for is 0.01 lines per millimeter. If you start to go above that I found things started to get a bit patchy or inconsistent results. Now, if you want to go something like a crosshatch effect you can obviously space them out a bit more but for general block detail colouring definitely keep it lower than 0.01. I found the best working range to be from 0.008 down to about 0.002. Now that is quite a wide range in terms of lines per millimetres but the reason I'm highlighting this is because actually doing a job at 0.002 is probably going to take four times as long as 0.008. But generally speaking, somewhere within that range should give you a nice flat quality on your glass engraving. Now the surprise I said about line interval was going lower than the settings I just mentioned. When I went down to 0.001, 
I almost started getting an embossing effect on the glass where it was raising the texture above the surface of it. It also made it a solid white color. Now obviously the downside to going that fine in your detail is the job is going to take longer, but it was nice to be able to get that result of having almost an embossed feeling on the glass with a solid white finish versus the almost half gray opaque look of the typical engraving you get on glass. Number of passes. Out of all the settings, this was probably the one that made the least amount of difference. The only difference was the more passes you do, the deeper into the glass it starts to engrave. However, the color difference didn't really seem to change between the engravings. Now there is a tip about multiple passes, which I'll move on to at the end of the video. But generally speaking, one pass should be enough as long as you've got your settings correct. Now I can't be 100% sure, but I do suspect the interval testing is what weakened the tempered glass. At the most intense settings with the highest number of pass rates, the engraving depth was almost a millimeter deep, and that's bound to have some sort of negative effect to the structure of the glass. So if I had to guess, that would be why I suspected it shattered. Big question. Does the type of glass make a difference? Now, I'm not a scientist, I don't know what the different compositions are, but yes, it does make a difference. However, probably not as much difference as I initially thought. Now on the tempered glass at the start, I was able to get some higher speeds on that in comparison to the typical window pane glass, but the reality was the operating range was pretty much the same across all of the different types of glasses that I have tested, not only in this video, but also the original review of the Omni One. And if you are interested in my original review of the Omni One, link will be up in the corner. And should you want to purchase one, Discount code and links will be down in the description area. Now the final variable I was looking at was the focus and to keep this simple, the best results were when the laser was at its correct focal distance or the right distance from the material. Now there was an operating window of around plus or minus two millimeters in terms of being out of focus. So it does mean that if your laser is not perfectly set to the right focal distance, it should still work. This is also important if you're doing things like cylindrical items without a rotary, because it means the operating window at the top of that cylinder should be slightly wider where it's still going to catch the glass. But I did start to find that once I went three or four millimeters out of focus, that the results started to get patchy. Now I said at the beginning about giving you some bonus tips as well as my best settings if I had to go in cold. Well, the first bonus tip is actually if you are doing cylinders, set your focal distance about one millimeter lower than the surface, and this should give you a bit more reach around the cylinder if you are not using a rotary. Now you do need to take into account the warp, but Lightburn does have a feature where you can account for that when doing your jobs. Now the second bonus tip is actually if you have a flaw or mistake in your work, it can be covered up. What I often found was the first second or so that the laser was firing, it wasn't quite catching the glass correctly. Now to resolve this, simply select the piece that you need to correct on your design, turn the scan angle around 180 degrees and rerun it for that particular part. Now, because the amount of passes doesn't really make a huge amount of difference, it means it will actually clean that part up without really changing the shading on the glass. So nobody should notice. Now, the third tip you may have already noticed, all my engravings on flat surfaces were lifted up slightly from the bed. Now the reason for this is if the laser does pass through the glass by mistake and hit the bed, it may start actually engraving the underneath of the glass by mistake. Obviously this is going to damage your bed as well as potentially damage the glass that you are working on. So what I would always do on flat surfaces, just elevate them up from the bed slightly and it just minimizes any issues on the underneath of the glass. And finally, if I had only one shot to do a job and had to go in cold with no testing, what would my settings be? Well, they would be 300 millimeters per second for the speed, Q pulse of one, frequency at 32, a line interval of 0 0.005 and one single pass. That would be my absolute set of settings that I would start with if I only had one shot. So hopefully my hours of testing have saved you some time and material on your UV laser. If the results work for you, 
excellent. If they don't and you find different results, let me know what worked for you in the comments section down below because it's always good to share settings so different people can learn. If you are interested in the Omni One UV laser, there will be some links and a discount code down in the description area for anybody wanting to purchase them. I do hope you found this useful and of course if you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons. I appreciate all the support I get from you and I'll see everybody on the next episode.